focus, focus. Friends, what is going on? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. Why am I whispering for? There's no one in this woodland apart from me. Hope so anyway. I'm sleeping here tonight. Friends, this is my first wild camp at the newly built base camp. That was a tongue twister and a half. So my apologies about the lightning. I've been working all day. I've been really busy with work recently. So I've been meaning, I want to do a wild camp. I want to do a quick wild camp. And so today was my opportunity. It arose, and um, but I finished work quite late. It's quite a bit of a drive from where I live in London to come to this particular woodland. And I got here and it was literally about 30 minutes before it was getting dark. Uh, I had to just quickly get my stuff hiked in, um, get some wood, scarpered around. So it's not usually how I go about setting up. I usually take my time allow my OCD to come into play and organize everything properly. Oh, oh, focus, focus, focus. Sorry about, it's low light conditions, that's what it is. Focus, is that better? No, that's even worse, I think. Do you know what, let's see if this works. Get my Dalek light on, hold on. Is that better? Well, I think it's better, it's got something to focus on now. That's what it is. Makes my nose look even bigger. Oh great, that's all I need. Let's try the lower light. Yeah, look at my nose. It looks like one of the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Pyramids of Giza. Right, apologies about that. So where was I? Yeah, so usually I arrive earlier in the day, get set up, get everything prepared. Uh, just time, that was it. I literally did not have any time. So I've scarped around. Um, and just grab a few bits uh, as much as I could. So I want to show you kind of like how I've got everything set up, but we'll do that in the morning when we've got daylight. That's unless I get attacked during the night tonight. Hope not. Right, so this is gonna be the first wild camp at the new built, newly built base camp. It's no frills, I'm literally just gonna cook up some food now. I'm gonna cook up uh, some burgers, as you do, um, and gonna cook up uh, some apple. Gonna bake some apple, uh, an, an apple, singular. Uh, for dessert and then that's it just going to chill out a little bit in the evening go to sleep wake up to the birds hopefully not pooing on my shelter as they've already done um wake up nice and early cook a quick bit of breakfast i'm thinking rice pudding i haven't, I haven't cooked that on video yet so i might just knock up some quick rice pudding and then that's it i've got to get packed up uh head back home and uh, another day of work tomorrow so i'm just sneaking in a very sneaky Sneaking in a very sneaky wild camp tonight. This video is full of tongue twisters. I'm getting that feeling, as well as the pyramids of Giza. That's it. So, got the fire going. Uh, I've quickly just roughly thrown down my sleeping mat and whatnot. I'll show you that in the morning, what I'm sleeping with tonight. It was a beautiful day today, really hot weather. However, the temperature is supposed to be dropping quite significantly tonight, I think down to about four degrees centigrade. So I bought my British Army Arctic sleeping bag. I don't want to run the risk, you know, kind of freezing my, freezing my bits off right during the night. So I've got all that set up. So yeah, I'm going to get the, uh, the burgers on now. So uh, let's get started. Right, the fire is going. Almost went out off camera to quickly rescue it. Right, so I've got the forehand lanterns hung up because they just look really good in video. It's the only reason why I got them. Now, plus, when you take the right Instagram picture, man, you get loads of likes. That's a, that's a hack, scramble dog style hack. So, we're not going to use a match, we're going to light a bit of twig because that's a very bushcrafty thing to do. So, let's do that. Do this. Oh, 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 we slip. Look at that. It's proper bushcraft, that lad. Oops, turn this off. Look at that. Let's get the trivet in the fire. The fire's starting to die down now, which is good. Let's put that there. Cast iron pan on. Let's get the light on so we can see a little bit better. It's better. Let's get a bit of oil on. Should 
Pretty enough. So we've got um, a couple of burgers. These are meat-free burgers. And yes, yes, before you all flip out, saying that's not real burgers, believe it or not, I did used to eat meat up until a few years ago. And you know what? These taste like a real thing. They really do. These are delicious. So we're just going to wait a minute or so. Wait for that oil to, to heat up in the cast iron pan and we get these on. In the meanwhile, what we can do, actually, is we can start prepping up the onions. So actually, it's a plural, so it's just the one onion. That's all we need. So you can't have burgers, man, without fried onions. The good thing is about peeling these outside is you don't get emotional. Man, I'm a right softy when it comes to uh, peeling onions indoors. I them burst into tears. So that's improper emotional. So let's get this done. As you see, we're actually bushcraft as well. We're cutting everything with a bushcraft knife. Actually, using the jack claw. I haven't used this in a while. I'm missing it. It's one of my favourite knives. A lot of sentimental value. It's the first uh, bushcraft knife I ever got. So, what do we want? We want like. Um, actually, we don't need them too, too thin. I'm not trying to. Ch chat someone up by cooking for them. So let's get these done. Let's just do a rough chop up. That's it. That'll do. Right, let's get these burgers on. Oh, we got a sizzle whizzle. Always important to get a sizzle whizzle. Let's get a second one on. Two burgers, people. Get a nice sizzle, turn these over. It's starting to cook through quite nice. I think now's the best time. Put the uh, some onions in on one side. Oh, some fried onions, people. A couple of bit, bits of onion have gone to the fire gods. Eyes are probably watering as well. So this is the first time I've actually testing out this light. It's the Apucha light. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's basically like a static LED light you put on top of your camera. It's come out quite bright, isn't it? You can't go lower than that. Let's see if I stand back here. Wow, that is really bright. Okay, so burgers are pretty much done. The onions are just finishing off. I'm just going to butter up the, the buns. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what she said. Um, and I'd just like to take this opportunity. Uh, to say that the uh, following segment is uh, sponsored by Starbucks. Not officially, but unofficially. I popped into the uh, service station on the way here, saw a Starbucks, young guy called Stuart, spotty teenager, doing his summer shift. I bought hot chocolate, as you do, that's a man's drink. And as I'm walking out, there's a load of condiments, butters and uh, ketchups, being one of them. I asked Stuart, can you only have these when you buy some food? He goes, no, you can help yourself. I proceeded to help myself. Much to Stuart's surprise, I filled my pockets. I casually walked out. Everything was good in the world. So thank you, Mr. Starbucks, for the lure pack butter salted, if I'm holding it the right way up, and the Heinz ketchup. Right, so the burgers and the onions are done. So Shown these silicon bags previous video, I think. I wanted to kind of minimize the amount of plastic bags and whatnot that I use. These are great, these are like food safe ones. Bought these off uh, Amazon, uh, weren't that expensive actually. I think it's a pack of four for, for 10 pounds, I believe. Let's put that to one side. So, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? So, um, should have picked up two butters actually off Stuart. So, that's it. Let's do a very manly thing and spread it with the jack law. 
Okay, okay, okay. So we've got we've got one butter booby for each side. Man, the amount of spiders and whatnot. It's a good thing I'm not squeamish with this stuff. If you were squeamish around spiders, man, you'd be annoying the wildlife with your screams around here. Right, well, actually, that's come on. Spoke quite nicely, actually. So, needs to have butter on the bread, man, otherwise it comes out too dry. Not my jokes. So, our last bun, two butter. Wow, we need to go and get the burger. So, let's get the. Oh, I'm trying to work out which one's the bottom one. That's it. Got that one there. Got that one there. Uh, let's get the onions. The last bit of onion here. Man, that smell is so good. God, I love onions, man. Let's put that to one side there. Let that cool down. So last but not least, the ketchup. We've got Heinz ketchup. Butchered the opening of that one. Get that on. Look at that, man. Are you guys dribbling? This honestly smells so good. Oh, man. Look at that, lads. Right, let's get the, the top. I actually I could have heated up the um, the buns a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Right, anyway. Man, I'm too tired for more innuendo. Right. I think it's looking good, boys. This flashlight is so bright. It's not the camera. Look at that. I've gone from one extreme to the other, pitch black to like sunglasses bright. So people, the burgers are ready to eat. I'm starving. So while I eat that, the fire has actually gone down to perfect embers right now. It's a lot of hardwoods in this forest, which is fantastic, right? So what I'm gonna be doing is cooking once I get attacked by moths, it's the only downside with this light on the on the on the camera. So I've got uh, the apple, right? It's actually from a neighbor's garden. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it in foil. It's a really simple thing to do, right? You can core it out. You can put things like sugar in it, uh, cinnamon, uh, raisins, dried fruit, a whole paraphernalia of things. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not even going to bother coring it out. Obviously, I'm not going to eat the core. Um, because when the seeds hit your stomach, trees go from it. Who else used to believe that when they were kids? I used to believe that, you know? As a kid, I used to believe that if you had apple seeds, right, the apple tree would grow from your stomach. God, man, the innocence of youth, huh? That was only about two years ago. So, I'm gonna wrap this up in aluminium foil, or as you folks say in the northern part of the Americas, aluminum. I'm going to wrap this up in aluminum foil uh, and just stick it on the embers and that's it. So touch wood, by the time I finish uh, scoffing down my burgers, the apple should be ready to eat and it tastes delicious. I've, cook I've cooked it before on a couple of occasions and it tastes really nice. So let's get this wrapped up in foil and straight on the embers. Here we go, the aluminum foil. Now typically, do you want to double this up? Fine, that typically it burns, right? Basically, you just wrap it up. Obviously, you want, you want to seal it up in a way where it doesn't spill out the sides, but it pretty much stays wholesome. But by the time it's cooked, touch wood, it comes out like apple pie. So let's get that on the embers. Nicely there. Oh, switched it off. I'm gonna blind you. <laughs> I can't get over how bright this light is on top. I'll show you in the morning. A future, a future. I actually first heard about it from Joe, Joe Robinet. Joseph Robinet. Right, man, he's doing some crazy adventures, that guy. There's a whole bunch of them doing some mad adventures. I feel well left out. So Joe, Joe Robinet's doing uh, Joseph, I like to call him. 
he's doing some epic adventures. He's moving to a beautiful place. Uh, Sean, Sean James from My Self Reliance. He's in Alaska, man. Visiting uh, Pronike's uh, cabin. Look at that, man. Living the adventure. Do some epic stuff, Sean. Uh, who else we got? We've got Mike TA, TA Outdoors. Man, he's doing. He's on the verge of building like a skyscraper, skyscraper city. That guy doing some epic builds, transcending all centuries and all generations and denominations. He's doing some epic stuff. Dag outside, took his beard off, nearly disowned him because he did that. He's growing it back now, so he's earned a trust back. Scramble though, he's gone missing. That guy, he's moved into his five million square foot basement. Who else we got? MCQ. He's living the adventure in Sweden. Uh, he's expecting now, so congratulations, Mike. Uh, and Meg, his partner. So obviously she's the one having a baby. Uh, who else we got? We've got uh, other people, and I'm going to get blasted for forgetting these people, man. Hayes Outdoors. Doing what Hayes does. Being outdoors. Doing some epic stuff as well. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of guys, man, and girls. Doing some really, really cool stuff. So... Meanwhile, they're doing all that. I'm sitting here about to tuck into a burger with tomato ketchup and butter I got from Starbucks. So let's get stuck into this, people. Right. So apologies about it. You're going to have to hear me squelching away on this burger. It smells good. That's a good sign. Let's take a bite. Oh, man. Cliche thing to say, but it tastes so good. Just the onions. The onions make it. And like I said, for you guys kick and scream, right, about this being a meat free burger, it's not real meat. Of course it's not real meat, it's meat free. But I kid you not, they're getting so. They used to taste really dodgy a few years ago. Apart from the Linda McCartney stuff. May she rest in peace. Her stuff is really good, it's always been really good, but quite expensive. Um, but over time now, it becomes so popular now, the whole vegan, vegetarian, whatever, right? Or people kind of at least moving towards more of a healthy diet. Uh, you've got so much of a choice now, and they're all up in their game, so their taste is really, really good. And uh, I don't eat it in terms of a diet, like calories or whatever, it's just a treat, you know, once in a while. If I get the inclination to eat meat, I don't really get it, get it that much. Uh, but if I do get it, then I'll just tuck in, you know, just tuck into one of these and that's it. It tastes like the real thing and that's it. Quenches my my desire to have a, a burger or whatever and then that's it. I'm fine again for ages. So, But that is very seldom that it's happening. Um, but yeah, this tastes really good, man. Like I said, apologies about the lighting. While I wipe my face away. Started to get darker earlier and early, but we're still getting long days. But I just got here so late. I got here for about 7 pm, so it gets dark about half eight. So I literally had an hour and a half to get completely set up. So typically, because I have all the camera gear as well, and a whole bunch of stuff to kind of get organized, and I always like to do a bit of a cleanup around camp before I begin filming and bring my stuff in and just kind of get, get set up basically. And it usually takes a while, but I just had to rush everything, you know, so by the time I really started filming, it got quite dark. And now I've got this flashlight from hell. <laughs> it's sitting there. I didn't realise it was that bright. I've never really properly tested it, you know, in terms of using it, like now and filming. My days, I didn't realise it's that bright. I've actually put a filter on it, otherwise it was really, really bright. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and get a, str a stronger gel for it. So it kind of softens the light up a bit more. It's way too harsh. Look at that. Let's actually move this camera up. Let's get the angle up. He's looking at my big nostrils at the moment. Oh, 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 I've not taken it too far up. It's not too bad. But yeah, all is good in the world, people. It's a beautiful night tonight. Like I said, I can already feel the temperature starting to drop. So I've got a base layer I'm going to put on and thermals. Hey! <laughs> and um, like I said, I've got the Arctic sleeping bag tonight. So the temperature is supposed to be dropping quite a bit. But we've had a really weird summer in the UK, about a month or so ago, roughly. We had a massive heat wave, and man, it got hot, 
hot, hot. It was crazy. Um, and then it died down. Then it got a little bit chilly for about a week or so. And then now it's kind of evened off again. And now we've got a few kind of like hot days. But at night time, the temperature is dropping quite a bit. So it's really weird. Uh, not that I'm complaining about the heat. But it's very unpredictable. That's what you get in the UK. It's not a case of we don't have extremes of cold. We don't have extremes of heat. Um, we're kind of like in the middle, right? But it's typically overcast. The problem in the UK with the weather is very unpredictable. That's the problem. So you go out, you can literally have four seasons in one day. And the weather report will say like bright sunshine and the sun shining on like the weather report site. An hour later and like grey cloud comes and like thunder and people screaming and Noah's saying he passed on his ark. And that's what you get in the UK. So it's just, it's just crazy, man. It's just like mental. Anyway, I'm not talking about the weather. My burgers are getting cold. So let me chomp on this. By the time I finish chomping on this, uh, touch wood, the, uh, the apple pea should be done. Right, friends, the moment of truth. First, let it smoke out my eyes. Right, let's get this out of the fire and these gloves. It's going to be quite hot. Oh, 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 that's looking really nice, that. One thing I do want to mention, I saw part of a video just briefly recently. I don't get much time to watch YouTube nowadays. And the gentleman was uh, trying to do something similar. I think he'd done it with a pair, uh, and he'd done it on a raging fire. You know, this is, for those of you that experience already know this, this is more for all those of you guys and girls that are new to this stuff, uh, especially outdoors cooking. Um, you want to make sure this kind of stuff you cook on embers, right, so steady heat. And also, you ideally want to double up the foil. You typically find it burns, um, unless you have a really thick aluminum foil or aluminium foil. Um, this one is kind of like a normal thickness, so I've just kind of doubled it up. But the key thing, being a gentleman, had it on raging heat, so it kind of burnt in places. So when you're cooking this stuff, just have a bit of patience. You really want to cook in embers. So as you can see, timing is a big thing. So obviously, I cooked the food. And as soon as that was done, it already settled into embers, so it's perfect just to put on. And then once, obviously now I've finished my burgers, uh, we're good to go. So let's see now how this tastes. Look at that, people. I know it just looks like a normal apple. Light is not great, but it looks very subtle and soft. <laughs> That's what she said. Right, let's turn this light off. We've already got plenty of light. I can light up half of London with this flashlight on the camera. So, like I said, you, typically you core the apple out and you can put things, like I said, uh, raisins and dry fruit and cinnamon and all sorts of shenanigans. You do need to be very careful because it's still very very hot you can tell as I've kind of like taken a spoon to it you can see all that smoke coming out so that is piping piping hot so we'll take just a little bit of a bite and we'll let that actually cool down I don't have asbestos uh, hands or mouth you got those people in it you pick up I saw a guy once, right, at a, a wild camp. I think it was a group gathering or something. I kid you not, he casually, I didn't know him. He was sitting on the other side of like, this little gathering, the circle around the fire, right, the ceremonial circle around the fire. And no joke, the guy, right, he just walked, I think it was an East European, actually, I think. Where was he from? I think it was Bulgarian, I think the guy was. It was, it was East European. I remember he just quiet, he casually walked up. He picked up this burning ember with his hands, picked it up and just casually moved it. He didn't flinch, he just picked it up and put it down. And I looked, another guy saw it, and I said, did you just pick that up with your bare hands? He looked at me, he nodded quietly, and he just sat down. Man, a guy like asbestos hands. Jeez, I would have been screaming like a woman if I picked that up with my hands. So as it's cooled down, I think it's still quite hot. All right, let's give this a taste. Oh God, it's so good. That is so good. Basically, it tastes like apple pie, literally. 
That's just the apple. There was nothing I'd done to it. Literally just heated it up in a foil on the fire. Oh man, that is so, so, so good. Like I said, it's nuclear hot at the moment. Can you see the smoke coming out of that? Can you see that? That's it, yeah. I've got a black background. That's how hot this is. Man, that is so good. Probably could have left it on the embers for about another five minutes. Very small kind of crunchy bits in there, so it didn't cook all the way through. And actually, because I kind of rushed it, I forgot to put the embers on top of it as well. But it's done, it's done. Yeah, the apple's good to go. And uh, my neighbor's, uh, it's actually a neighbor's uh, uh, garden. So you've got, what's it got? Plum tree, pear tree, apple tree. And um, he doesn't eat them. He never eats them. And it hangs over my garden. Well, uh, the kind of family garden a little bit. And, um, but he just told me straight. He just told me for years. Just, just help yourself. And it's crazy. He doesn't eat it. I'm like, it's beautiful. The plums are really nice. Um, the apples are really nice. The pears are really nice. It's a shame he just doesn't eat it, but just the way this is London for you, man. I'm telling you, people they don't appreciate it. Like, I see it as a nuisance. The amount of people that are cutting down to say, oh, we don't want them. What do we want them for? Sad times, man. Mm. That is so good. It's weird, it's kind of cooked through this time around. The skin. Quite crunchy. Not had that before. The skin usually just just melts. Must be this particular breed of apple. But anyway, man, we're looking good, people. We're looking good. All is good in the world. This is so good. I'm not even made eye contact yet with the camera. I keep thinking whether to look at this 5,000 watt light on top of the camera. Or the lens. I don't think you want to hear me munching on this anymore. I'll bring you back when I'm done. So my friends, all is good in the world. I finished my dessert. It's getting late now, I'm quite tired. It's been a very, very long day. I get out quite early for work because I deal with a lot of guys in the US. So I get out very, very early. Usually I take a power nap uh, about midday but because I have so much to do and obviously then get ready and come here, I didn't have time so I'm going to be hitting the sack now. I'm going to get changed into my sleeping clothes. I'm actually using my base layer. I've got a new base layer. Well it's not technically a base layer, it's from Carhartt. You can't see the logo there, it's too dark. But I just bought this just recently. I love the Carhartt gear. I thought myself, why not get a couple of pieces to wear outdoors right it just doesn't mean it has to have a bushcraft label so I bought a shirt this is a flannel shirt and I'm dead impressed with this you know it didn't cost me much I keep an eye out for bargains you know online this is what I do with clothing I I stuff up online I try and find an outlet in person where I can try it on for size for sizes are always very kind of different and the thing with a Carhartt gear is you're two different Carhartts you've got Carhartt US and you've got Carhartt Whip, which is European. Okay, Whip standing for Whip, uh, standing for Work in Progress. Okay, and the way it works is for those of you that aren't aware, for those of you that are, you already know this. But with a Carhartt gear, when you buy a Carhartt US, it's US sizes, and they're typically one size bigger. So if you buy, for example, a large US, that's a medium, a European, UK. So when you buy a Carhartt US, the sizes are typically one size bigger. But when you buy a Carhartt Whip, Carhartt Work in Progress, the Carhartt European, they're true size, they're true European stroke UK size. So if you get a large Carhartt UK, then it's a large, okay? Um, so you have to always have to be careful because when you buy a Carhartt stuff online, let's say eBay or whatever, um, you've got to find out if it's Carhartt American or European, right? So coming back to my point, what I do, with clothes in general actually, 
but I've done it with the Carhartt gear, this uh, sweat top, um, this shirt, and I bought a, a gillet as well, a vest, really nice vest. So I bought the three of them, so this is what I do. I find them online, see what I like, I then find a local supplier. Now, there's not a huge amount within the UK, but obviously Carhartt is still a popular make here. Uh, but I managed to find one, I went to get uh, some fixed with my MacBook, MacBook Pro, at the Apple store in East London, Stratford, when the Olympics were. And it's a huge Westfield shopping centre there. So I went there anyway, had to sort my MacBook out, and I had to wait a couple of hours for my appointment at the Genius Spa in the Apple store. Uh, but anyway, I found a, an outlet there, John Lewis, that had the Carhartt gear. So what I do, find it online, I then find an outlet, go to the outlet, and I try it on for size to make sure I'm 100% happy with it, okay? And I make a note of the sizes. Then what I do, I go back online, and I look out for the cheapest price. Okay, I look out on eBay. There's a bunch of shopping apps now on both the iPhone and Android that are really good. People selling kind of used clothing and whatnot, and obviously new stuff as well. And then I go online and I look for the best bargain. You know, so you don't need to buy a full price, but obviously you've got to make sure the size is kind of good for you. Um, and I just kept my eye, and I was very fortunate. I just hit a seller on eBay who was selling um, two of the garments, this shirt and this top, two different sellers selling a brand new kind of in packaging and whatnot and uh, it was quite a bit cheaper about, so about 30 percent cheaper than the retail um so that's what you kind of do you know you've got to just keep your eye out for the bargains um so anyway i've got this sweat top it's kind of like a slightly thicker cotton uh, but it's dry wicking and it's got this stain technology where stain comes off which you need right when you're doing bushcraft um, and i've got my base layers okay which you can't see i know green base layers these are actually British Army issue ones um, and these are fantastic I love these they're quite long as well so they kind of got good coverage uh, they're really nice fitting and they're warm they're really warm and you know what I paid I bought this a couple of years ago I, I'm not even lying I think I paid about three pounds for these roughly um, and um, which is about what three dollars fifty cents US yeah four dollars um, Dollar's quite strong against the pound at the moment. So it's peanuts, it was nothing. It's so warm. And you could buy base layers like this, like you know, for a lot, lot, lot more pricier than that. I actually normally have north face ones, they're kind of dry wicking. Um, but yeah, they're, they're starting to wear out a little bit now. I've had those for quite a few years. And so yeah, so I'm gonna put on these British Army base layers, um, put on my Carhartt top. Snuggle up, in, snuggle up in my arctic sleeping bag get lacerated by moths and mosquitoes and then i get hopefully a good night's sleep and i shall see you beautiful people in the morning Beautiful friends, what is going on? Good morning. I had a great sleep last night. However, one problem. I was getting attacked by spiders. I don't mind them. They're crawling all over, uh, crawling all over my face. So I was doing karate kid moves all night. Wax on, wax off. Seriously, it was crazy. All night, you know. So I didn't get like this consistent sleep. It was just kind of irritating, walking across my face. So yeah, I woke up a bit later than I intended to, so I'm in a bit of a rush right now. But the good thing is, is that um, I'm glad I used the Arctic sleeping bag because the temperature really did drop during the night, like properly. Um, so yeah, I was glad I, I used that. So the plan now is to get a quick fire going, knock up some rice pudding, as you do. Um, before that, I promise I want to show you uh, my sleeping kit, okay? And oh, I just realized this is the Carhartt jacket that I bought. Let me zoom out, give you a proper view of this. So this here is the, the gillet that I bought vest. This is the Sherpa lined one. I know they do the duck line one, which is something I'm also eyeing up. So I bought these, uh, I wasn't given these. <laughs> I wish I was given these. 
Uh, and these are really, really nice. Like so heavy duty these. <clears throat> so I bought this and like I said, I bought a flannel. I've got one in kind of like a dark red, which is also really nice, but this is literally the nicest flannel I've bought to date. It's really thick material. It's still very, very comfortable though. And you can tell it's very hard wearing. Um, but the flannel shirts I've got are either kind of real cheap ones, which still do the job, you know, or they're just too thin. Uh, I wanted one that isn't too thick either because I've got wool ones for that. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with this. And like I said, I bought the gillet. Looking quite swanky, even if I do say so myself. Uh, and what I like about this, the collars go down, okay. Uh, or they can go up, so obviously you can zip it right up. And this is the most important thing when you're getting cold, is this neck area, that's the big one. It makes such a huge difference. So all in all, I love it. I really, really, really love this waistcoat. I've been after someone that's really hard wearing for ages. And usually you're looking at the bushcraft brands, right? And they're great, but I just think to myself, you're kind of restricted. So I thought, so Carhartt, Carhartt are always really good quality, really hard wearing, obviously designed more for work wear. Well, then why can't you wear them outdoors? As long as you don't mind getting bits of debris, leaves and whatnot on them, or wood smoke, I don't mind any of that. Uh, but all in all, yeah, I really love this jacket. That's it, man. Carhartt, if you're watching, sponsor me, man. I want more of your swanky kit. So before I pack all this away, I'll just do a quick run through. Um, I've got a wall blanket underneath. Even though it's quite level, I, I, and that's a point, actually. Uh, it's the first time I'm properly sleeping on this bed. And man, it was spot on. My concern was some of these kind of like struts will be kind of uh, digging into my back and I put a wool blanket down this is an army issue one it turns out it's a Serbian army issue um, I'm actually after a, a king size wool blanket like the similar to the Pathfinder ones like, was it a queen size they sell uh, but at the moment yeah I just use this to kind of level it off uh, I then use this thick foam pad that I've had for donkey's years uh, so I'll put that on top and then obviously on top is my arctic sleeping bag but yeah, it was actually really comfortable. I think the, the angle of the bed itself, okay, like going crossways, I think it's very slightly down going there, just very slightly. Um, but apart from that, you know, yeah, it's, it was genuinely really comfortable. So I've got that, and I've got my, man, it's proper luxury here, because there's nothing lightweight. I've got my Van Gogh blow up pillow. I've had this for years as well. It's so, so comfortable. It's not the uh, most compact, but it does actually roll up quite tight. And uh, always in my bed, uh, just keep my headlight. I've had this silver headlight, headlamp, that I bought when I first started out in bushcraft all those many years ago. And it's still going strong, you know. It just takes one AA battery. It lasts for absolutely ages. Um, so yeah, night time, I just kind of keep it next to my pillar, obviously in case of emergency, and get attacked by the farmer who is currently at crazy o'clock in the morning sawing something in the field next door. It sounds like he's sawing up some dead bodies, man. Right, so there you go, man, my sleep system. So, yeah, with the bed, really comfortable, man. Really, really comfortable. So I've got the wood uh, ready to go. Don't need a huge amount of it. And I'm gonna be making rice pudding. Something I mentioned ages ago, I'm gonna show how. It is so, so, so simple to make. You just need rice and milk, and that is it. Now in terms of the rice, okay, I'm using the kind of the ready-made rice. Obviously you can just make your own. Um, and you just make your rice how you normally make it. Obviously uh, cleaning the rice, a couple of times the dry rice, uh, and then leaving it to soak for about 30 minutes and then just boiling it you know and maybe just a tiny pinch of salt um, and that's basically it and however you make your rice basically okay you want to use ideally white rice um, i use basmati rice it's quite a nice rice um, relatively simple to cook just for ease of use i just got the ready-made stuff and this stuff is pretty cheap from the supermarket uh, so i've got some tesco's this is like the UK uh, version of Walmart, for those of you watching from the US. And 
Yes, I know this stuff isn't like super healthy for you, right? But I don't eat this every day. I literally just occasionally eat it when I'm outdoors. And once again, it's just for ease, okay? Uh, it's not the lightest thing to carry. If you're going on multi-day trips or whatever, you won't be carrying this. But it's a fixed base camp. It's a short overnight up, so yeah, it's no big deal. Um, so literally, all you do with this is, one thing I find with a packet rice is you always just got to break it up inside a packet. I've seen a couple of people one on video, one in person, where they pour it into the bowl and then they start breaking it up in the pot. You don't need to do that, it's a lot easier. It's therapeutic, it's like a mood, what do they call it, a mood ball. I'm gonna sit there, I've got one near my desk, you know. And they're really relaxing, that's it. It's like, just let it go, Z. just think of all the anger and the hate. All those people leaving dislikes in your videos. Farmer next door, who's sawing up their bodies. Let go the anger towards the spiders that are crawling in your face all night. I'm feeling better already. That's it. Just break it all up. And I said, you're done, right? So we just open it up uh, and we're going to pour it into whatever cooking pot you got. I decided to bring my Crusader mess tin out. I didn't realise these are so difficult to get hold of now. I bought this when I first started out years ago. Still going strong. It's one of my favourite tins, you know. Uh, what I love about it is it's got the long handle. But then it's got the lid, and the lid also, put this down, also folds out to be a, a frying pan. Quite a shallow one, but nonetheless a frying pan. And obviously you can just use it as a lid to kind of put on and off, right? Or just a, a fan on a hot day, or if you're feeling shy like that. Or if your wing mirror breaks in the car, you can just stick it on the side. It's multi-purpose. But yeah, love this tin. So yeah, so we're going to be using the Crusader mess tin. Just put the rice in, and then basically you just pour milk into it. That is it. Okay. Um, and then you boil. That is as simple as it gets. Uh, you can obviously add things to it, okay, to affect the taste and make it nicer. You can put sugar in it. A lot of people put sugar. I tend to avoid it because I'm sweet enough. But yeah, I, I typically just don't put sugar in there because yeah, I'm trying to not cut out, but just completely minimise the amount of sugar that I take. Uh, but yeah, typically you add some sugar to it, sweeten it up a bit. Um, so you can dry fruit, raisins, whatnot. One thing I only just realised is um, uh, brambles. Okay, so loads of brambles here. So we'll do a quick search around for some for some berries um, once this is done, and I'll add them on uh, at the end. Um, if it's like dry fruits or kind of dried raisins or whatever, you kind of add them in kind of like as it's almost done, like cooking on the fire. So obviously they can soak up some of the milk uh, and kind of moisten up. Um, but the berries obviously will be fresh, so they'll be supple and ripe anyway. So I don't need to do that. So I'll add those in right at the end. And that's all you do. So just rice, however you, you want to make your rice normally, or just get the kind of pre-made uh, pre ones like I'm doing. Put them into a pot, pour some milk into it, enough for it to just cover. Um, Typically you would just leave it for maybe five, 10 minutes for the kind of milk to soak in anyway, but I'm in a bit of a rush, so I'm just gonna cook it as is, and it's still perfectly fine. The rice is cooked, you typically, you're typically just heating it up. That's all you're doing with the pre-cooked ones. Um, and then like I said, that's it, it's done. Then just after that, just add a few bits and bobs to it, to your own heart's desire, and you chomp it down. So it's a good amount of calories, kick you off for the day. Um, and that's it, so let's get the rice into the fire. Quite a bit there, so what I'll do is about a third of the packet left. I'm just going to feed that to the birds. Get the milk out. Just again, we just want enough to just cover it. Okay, still what we got? Still got, still got about half a half a carton left quite a bit left in there so that's it so now all I'll do for the moment is just pull the handle out let's just cover this up I think a fly just landed in there so that's the protein sorted for the day there we go so let's get the fire going
just important with the uh, rice pudding you keep stirring so you don't want the milk to burn basically so I'm using the uh, what is this the titanium uh, the Vargo spoon in fact it's once again for years one of the first bits of kit I bought so just to keep a bit of a distance from the fire see it's getting quite hot now but yeah it's important to keep stirring otherwise the milk will burn another dead fly in there man I'm, I think I'm exceeding my daily protein intake with the flies in this uh, rice pudding Okay, so this is done. So yeah, the constant stirring has prevented milk from burning, which is good. But yeah, this is cooked through now, so let's take this off the fire. So what we'll do for the moment, we'll just cover this up and we'll go and forage some berries. So there's loads of bramble well throughout this entire woodland but the berries haven't really come in abundance this year last year there were loads but there still are quite a few so without getting ripped to shreds with a bramble let's see if we can forage some berries So, let's give this a taste test. Let's have a berry on top. Oh man, that's good. Even without sugar. It's interesting. So I've cut down quite dramatically. I've never had a sweet tooth. So I've been quite fortunate in that sense. But since even then dramatically cut it down on the sugar it's weird how you kind of get used to it you know then when you do have even just the slightest bit of sugar it hits you so yeah so i've just gotten used to it like even my tea for years of my life i always had two two teaspoons then over the past two three years going on a bit of a health change i cut down to one and a half and to one and then i had half and then i spent the almost kind of the past year just no no sugar in my tea it was weird, I didn't enjoy it. Even with a half uh, a teaspoon, it was it was still nice. But the moment I removed that completely, I, I didn't get used to it. Or so I thought. So for almost a year, I um, yeah didn't have sugar in my tea. Then I thought, you know what, screw it. Let's just put in half a teaspoon again. And it was disgusting. <laughs> I hated it. So that whole year, my body did actually get used to it. And I did enjoy it. I just didn't realise it. And then when I put half a teaspoon in, I couldn't drink the thing. I was like, oh, what's this? This is nasty. Um, so yeah, it's weird how you kind of get used to these things, but um, I typically have sugar when I'm outdoors. I don't know what it is, I just need a bit of a sugar rush. Um, but yeah, but anyway, uh, just kind of day to day, no, I, not at all. This is good people, rice pudding, man. Have a go at making it yourself. Just use the pre-made ones in a packet, it saves you a lot of hassle. If you do want to make rice, then fine, go for it, you know. But at this stage, like I said, you can add on things like raisins and cinnamon. Cinnamon's really nice in it. Uh, dry fruit, 
um, even chopped up fruit, you know, um, uh, you can kind of cut up some apples or whatever, whatever you want, you're kind of just limited by your imagination and it's really good, fuels you up for the morning. Mm. So there you have it my friends, that was a wrap for this video. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, this is a no frills video, the main goal was really just to sleep, sleep at the camp. Um, just to see how the bed is working and how I kind of feel in the shelter and all in all I'm really happy with it you know uh, really happy with how the bed came out and uh, it was genuinely very comfortable so obviously come autumn and winter I do some more wild camps here and I'm a lot happier the one thing I am going to do is I'm going to move the fire pit and the reflector back by about a foot so about as much far as I can take it back uh, because there's a, st a massive stump in the way just behind it the reason being why is I found that the smoke was hitting the top of the shelter, even though I thought it was still at a clear distance, it was still hitting and it was circulating inside the shelter a little bit. It wasn't massively annoying, but I did notice it at night time, obviously, especially with the lanterns, the uh, forehand lanterns, it just really illuminated the smoke and I can actually see the movement of the smoke. So that's just a lesson learned. The whole point of this build was to kind of learn lessons, right? So I realized I need to have a really good clearing for when the fire is burning, the smoke to go straight up, you know, not hit the shelter at all. Um, so that's the only thing I'm going to do. I'll just do that off camera. There's nothing exciting about that. And then that's really it. That's the kind of big lesson that I've learned to kind of move that back a bit and touch where it should be fine. Because obviously over the autumn and winter, there's going to be a lot more fires happening. So there you go, man. Hope you enjoyed this video. As always, it's a pleasure to see you guys and uh, to kind of connect and have this dialogue where we discuss issues, how we're feeling, our emotions, our mood, our upbringing, all of those things. At the very least, you saw me scoff down a load of food and all of it was actually all came out really nice, quite surprised. So there you go. Hope you guys have been keeping well, man. Hope someone's been treating you good. Let me know in the comments what you've been up to, if you've been out and stuff. I know I've been keeping in touch with quite a few of you via uh, PM on Facebook, but they remove that feature on YouTube. So PM on Facebook and Instagram as well. So it's always really nice to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments what you've been up to all summer, what you got planned for the autumn. And uh, yeah, I have a few cool things planned over the coming weeks. So stay tuned. And until then, as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. Zed unofficially sponsored by Carhartt and Starbucks. Peace out.